Welcome to section 1.2, order of operations. So today's objectives are to simplify expressions with exponents and then use the order of operations to evaluate expressions. All right, first we're gonna le learn a mnemonic that might help you remember how to do order of operations. In the past, you've seen PEMDAS is what you're probably used to. And I'm gonna add to a little bit so what you have here is germdos. Because with PEMDOS, the P just stands for parentheses. But as we go forward in algebra, we're going to use all sorts of different grouping symbols this year. So instead, I'm using germdos because G is for grouping symbols. And there is a bunch of them we're going to use this year. So it's important to know what they are and that we do groups first. And some of the grouping symbols you're gonna see this year are gonna be like the square root of x plus five. That's a grouping symbol. When you have a division bar with something over something else, the, the division bar is a grouping symbol. It's not just parentheses anymore. There's other grouping symbols we'll be working with. Most of the rest of this is the same that you're used to. The E is still exponents. What we've added here is the R, which is for radicals. And so later this year, you will see more, or especially as you go forward in mathematics, you're going to see radicals, the square roots of stuff. You're going to see cubed roots of things. So these are next in line. The exponents and radicals are the same, have the same importance. So when we run into them in expressions, they have the same importance. So whatever comes first as you're going along is what you do first. So these have the same importance. And now we go down to what you're used to also is M and D, which is multiply and divide. And these also have the same weight or same importance when you're working on simplifying things or doing your order of operations. And then we have add and subtract. And again, these have the same importance as you're working on expressions from left to right. All right, so here, instead of using PEMDAS, I'm gonna use GERMDAS because now we have more grouping symbols than you're used to seeing. Instead of just parentheses, there's, there's a bunch more that we use throughout mathematics as you go further, further on. And then we've added radicals because you're gonna start seeing more square roots. And as you go forward, you'll see even more stuff with radicals in them. So there is a mnemonic that will help you remember how to do your order of operations. Now that we've talked about the order of operations, let's simplify some expressions. The first one we have is four to the fourth power. When you simplify this, you can do this on your calculator and you will find that four to the fourth power is 256. Next we're gonna go to number two and three to the fifth power is 243. Next we'll do number three where we have nine minus three in parentheses all squared divided by four. So here we need to use our order of operations. And first thing we look for is our grouping symbols. And here we have nine minus three inside of parentheses, which is a grouping symbol. So it is what we're going to do first. So our first step, we get nine minus three is six. This will be squared divided by four. The next thing we're gonna look at is exponents and radicals. And we have an exponent and we have six squared, which is 36. The next step is to look at multiplication and division. And we do have division going on here. We have 36 divided by four, which is nine. So when we simplify this, we get an answer of nine. Next we'll look at is number four. And this has a bunch of different things going on. We have two to the fifth power plus 11 plus 14 in parentheses divided by five. 
Again, we're going to use our order of operations. And the first thing we look for is grouping symbols. And we do have a grouping symbol with 11 plus 14 in parentheses. So that is what we do first. So we have 2 to the 5th. Add those together, we get 25. So 11 plus 14 is 25 divided by 5. The next part we do is exponents and radicals. And we have an exponent. We have 2 to the 5th power. And 2 to the 5th power is 32. And that's what we do next. Everything else stays the same for now. The next step is to look for multiplication and division. And we do have division going on here. We have 25 divided by 5 right here. So we're going to do that next. So now we have 32. 25 divided by 5 is 5. And last, we do addition and subtraction, and we get 37. So we simplify this, we get 37. When you're doing these simplifies, especially with like numbers 3 and 4, you need to show all your steps, show everything you're doing, one piece at a time. Next thing we're going to be doing today is evaluating for if we have variables in an expression. And what we're going to do is plug in the variables numbers that we're given. So we have x squared plus 2x plus 16 divided by y squared. And what we're going to do is put in the values of 3 for all of our x's. And we'll put in the value of 4 for all of our y's. So we get 3 squared plus 2 times 3 plus 16 divided by four squared. When you do this, when you substitute in, you need to show that you're substituting. So I need to see that you put in the three for the X's and the fours for the Y's. Now we will go through and use our order of operations. And we're going to look for grouping symbols. This can be confusing a little bit because we do see parentheses here. But when we do this, we have two and then we have parentheses three. But inside the parentheses, there is no operators. When we're talking about grouping symbols, we're looking at, is there something happening inside the grouping symbol? In this case, there is nothing happening. We have just 2 times 3. There's no operator in there. Like up on the upper right, you see x plus 3. That has an operator in there. So if we could do something with that one, we would. In this case, it's just telling us to multiply. So we don't actually do that parentheses. It's just there to tell us to multiply. So in this problem, there are no grouping symbols. So we're going to go down to next to our exponents and our radicals. And we do have exponents. We have two terms in here that have exponents. So we can do both of them at the same time. We have 3 squared, which is 9. The rest here does not change. Then we have 4 squared, which is 16. So now we've done our exponents, and we're at 9 plus 2 times 3 plus 16 divided by 16. Next we're going to do is multiplication and division. And we are going to do this like you read a book. You go from left to right, always from left to right. So the first thing we run into, we have a 9. Nothing happens with it, but we have 2 times 3. So the product of 2 and 3, when we write this out, is 6. Then we have a plus, and then we have this piece right here. We have 16 divided by 16, and 16 divided by 16 is 1. So now we have 9 plus 6 plus 1. We do our last piece, which is addition and subtraction, and we add them all up, and we get an answer of 16. So this has been substituted in. And I've showed all of my steps using GermDOS or using the order of operations. This is what you need to show in your homework. This is what you'll need to show on your quizzes and tests. You have to show the substitution. You have to show that you're going through step by step with the order of operations. And then we have x plus y in parentheses raised to the second power. Here we substitute in again, show your substitutions. In this case, again, we're going to do germdos, and it says to first take 3 plus 4, because we're doing a grouping symbol, and then we get 7 squared. We did our grouping symbol, the next thing is exponents, and we just get 49. 
That was a pretty simple one there. But it gives you an idea how to put things in, do your grouping symbols first, then your exponents and radicals, then multiply and divide, add and subtract. All right, so for today, we did the order of operations. And we've changed the order of operations a little bit by adding, instead of just saying parentheses, now we're saying use grouping symbols because there's more than just parentheses. We've also added radicals because we'll be doing those later on throughout the year. I need to understand that those are part of the order of operations also. We simplified expressions using the order of operations and we did evaluating with numbers being put in for variables in our expressions. That is all for section 1.2, order of operations. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.